Well, hello there, Retro PC Durham. It's Chris here with another Lenovo thing. This Think Center product. Now, back in 2009, we're still about three or four years away from the release of Lenovo's tiny desktop product, which revolutionized, revolutionized uh, the whole idea of building small form factor desktop style computers. Uh, almost around the same time, within a year or so, Intel released the first Nuke uh, form factor product, and then within about a year to two, year, two years, almost everybody out there was competing with something that was using the small form factor, uh, this tiny form factor. But before that, uh, you know, there was still mostly the design of using traditional desktop components and trying to fit them in as small a form factor as you possibly could. What made the tiny different was it was using laptop components instead of mostly laptop components, almost entirely laptop components, instead of desktop components to be able to make it so small and take up so little space and use very little power. This would be, I think, maybe the precursor to it. This is an Eco Ultra Small... Ugh. This is an Eco Ultra Small Form Factor desktop PC, the Think Center M58, machine type 7359. So, take a look at this, pretty unassuming. You got your standard front end here. We've got a pair of USB ports, our power button. We have a DVD multiplayer. Multi burner. Now you'll notice here, this is actually a full-sized DVD drive. It's not even using the laptop size uh, DVD drive, which you did have Think Centers within this family, uh, maybe a year or two before, a year or two after even, using those small form factor laptop drives, which had already been out for a long time. So very interesting you see using the larger size form factor storage Move around to the back here and take a look at our port connections. We've got our system fan, VGA and display port out. We've got another six USB ports. We've got our gigabit ethernet and integrated audio. And that's it, that's it, huh. So here's where the first part of how we save space on the computer is, is powering it instead of being through a regular power connection is done with a power brick. Yeah, so if we take the power supply out of the actual computer, it certainly saves quite a bit of space and a little bit of cooling requirements. So this 130 watt AC adapter gives us the power that we need to run this entire system. That's problem solved number one. If we take a look on the inside, we'll see some of the components that are in here as well. Opening up the system is very simple as a business machine, Toolless design is very important to be able to get systems up and running and upgrade them as quickly as possible because time is money after all. So by flipping this switch in the back, it actually will trigger some movement mechanicals in the front, which allows you to be able to lift up the system. If you can see here when I move the latch, you can see those little lock gauges moving. And that opens this up into the inner workings of the machine here. I'm just going to latch it up here and we're going to move the camera. Okay, we'll take a look at the inner workings of the machine here and you'll see some interesting stuff going on here. As I mentioned, we have that full-size optical drive. We also have a full-size hard disk drive, three and a half inch instead of going with a two and a half inch drive, of which already existed in the marketplace today to be able to put laptop drives into systems. You could put the 2.5 inch in. So you've got these full-size drives and those are sitting underneath the top shelf of the system. We've got our front panel connectors for our USB ports power set are routed through and those plug into this system board which is a very small size it would be maybe it's it's obviously a custom board um, but maybe like a micro ATX form factor we've got our SATA cables which are routed through to plug here and then power for these devices is coming off this four pin connector on the board which runs to a pair of SATA power connectors for each of these two devices as far as memory goes, we're using SODIMM. So this is laptop level stuff, right? SODIMM memory, I've got two two gig sticks in here for four gig of RAM. That was the maximum supported memory on this system, this DDR2. This is an LGA 775 socket, 
with an Intel Core 2 Duo E7300 processor. So it's a desktop class processor in here instead of a laptop class processor. Interesting. You still don't need a ton of cooling to get this thing going, so that's fine. And then we've got um, built-in speaker down here. So we've got built-in integrated audio. That's pretty cool. And then if we look at the system board here, there's a couple extra components in here. We've got an extra, we've got a PCI slot for expansion, low profile expansion. So that would be maybe, I don't know, a second uh, network card, maybe a Wi-Fi card that you'd be able to plug in here and have the antennas coming out. We've got an additional SATA connector here. Of course, I'm not sure what exactly you're going to fit in here. Maybe if you would somehow be able to fit some kind of uh, SSD drive in here, but then how are you going to power it? Because you've only got the one power connector coming off the board and there's no additional signal connectors for power. I don't know. There's also some additional USB port connectors here. Obviously, if this form factor case was going to be used or the system board was going to be used for other sizes, maybe the regular ultra small form factor used the same system board and that gave it a little bit more room to add some more USB ports or something of that nature. I'm not sure exactly how that worked. And then we had another system fan connector here for some additional cooling. Uh, again, if there was a different case that used it. So all in all, very interesting. I mean, an innovating design, really good being able to cut down on space by using some smaller components. But then at the same time, very strange, using desktop class components, you could have shrunk these down, used smaller components, and cut the size of this system down by another half an inch to an inch right off the bat. So again, very strange. That's the way that they put the system together, but it snaps in together pretty easily. Doesn't weigh a lot. Easy to be able to fit this under a desk, under a monitor, stick it up on its side, wherever you needed to put it. And then you only had to worry about this power brick to worry about at the same time as far as connections go. So let's get this thing all hooked up here and we'll uh, show off what's going on in the Windows world with it. Okay, let's power on. You hear that system fan coming on and getting going quite powerful, um, which I guess is good because you do have that Core 2 Duo processor in there that you need to make sure that you're cooling off correctly with only one fan in the system to be able to cool it down. And it's going to be sucking in warm air from all the other components inside the system. That Core 2 Duo E7300, again, we mentioned maximum of four gig worth of memory that you could be installing into that system. Uh, there was support for RAID on the onboard controller, but again, I'm not sure how you would be able to accomplish that because for you to install additional hard drive, where are you gonna fit it and how are you gonna power it up without adding a whole bunch of extra expansion cables or something? Very strange in terms of how that was put together. Uh, the storage drive that you could be on here could have been any number of drives. This is a 250 gig drive installed in here. You could have also had a 160 gig or a 500 gig installed, depending on how you got it configured. Uh, and then you would have, as I mentioned, the onboard audio. Graphics-wise was an Intel graphics card. I think it's GMA, oh, what, a GMA 4500 uh, graphics card, which would support dual monitors. So that DisplayPort and VGA could be plugged in um, at the same time and give you dual monitor support off of that system as well. Well, I guess that's kind of cool. All right, we're up and running in Windows here, and we're just going to open up the old Task Manager and take a look at what's going on from a performance perspective. So, as I mentioned here, we've got our, again, oh, this is interesting. So I guess I don't have the same processor that I thought here. This is an an E5300, not an E7300, so a little bit lower end. Um, that's a dual, a dual core processor, though. And then memory, as I mentioned, we've got that four gig of memory. Some of it is going to be getting pulled into running the graphics adapter. It again, some interesting stuff here. It says slots two of four used, but as you clearly see on the system board, there's only two memory dim slots available on the system board. So some interesting things going on there. And then we've got that 250 gig SATA hard drive installed in the system as well. So all in all, a very interesting system setup for this machine. It's small. Uh, it's not incredibly quiet. That fan is noticeable in the background. 
and maybe in an office environment it would be drowned out but definitely for something this small I would expect it not to be making as much noise as it actually is. When I compare it to my experience with using something like a ThinkCenter Tiny, it's got a little tiny, tiny fan inside of it, a blower fan essentially, the same as you have in a laptop. You never notice it running in the background, even when the system is chugging along trying to do some extra work with its, you know, cheesy little T uh, thermal, uh, thermal tolerance uh, laptop style CPU installed. Well, regardless of any of the shortcomings of this system, comparatively speaking, it's still a perfectly good desktop computer. This is going to serve its purpose in someone's home or in a library or community center or somewhere, getting a second life, using to be able to connect up to the internet, um, play some simple games, uh, maybe be able to hook up a, a headset and a camera and be able to do a simple Zoom meeting or something. It's going to be able to handle that, and that's the important part for this little guy, that he's uh, not just going to head himself over to the, the dustbin and never be seen or heard from again. That wraps it up for me today. I do hope that in these strange and uncertain times you are keeping safe and healthy, and we will catch you in the next one.